Now, imagine being falsely accused of a dreadful crime. Well, in 2011, false rape allegations almost ruined our next guest's life. Paul Fenson joins us now. Thank you. Paul, thank you so much for, for coming on the show, because okay. obviously rape is an incredibly serious topic. It's one that we've discussed here, obviously, as a, as a, as a panel of women and an, an audience uh, mainly of women. Um, so thank you for coming on to tell your story in terms of what happens when a man has his life ruined by being falsely accused. How did it feel for you when your life was turned upside down, you, you were put in prison for a week, um, and then obviously the case against you was dropped because it was found not to be true. How was that time for you then, and how has it been since? Um, it, uh, well, when they first come to arrest me, I thought it was a bit of a joke, because I thought they were having a laugh, and then I ended up in, like, Winston Green for eight days, accused of uh, all these allegations of rape and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Then I get released and put on bail. And then two weeks later, they come and arrest me again, give me more charges. So I, I was then facing a 19 charges of rape, assault and beat up. Um, eventually got bailed after a lower 28. I was in prison altogether 36 days. I eventually get released and then luckily through work and uh, friends, me, the wife and family and friends, and the phone company, we got mm. all my records and whatever everything from the last three years and blew holes in every allegation. She put, every time she put a, a date to a thing, we could basically pick. She did pick things up that had happened, but luckily <laughs> with me and the wife, we mm. keep diaries and everything's written in it. How were you treated in, in prison? Prison was a... Uh, I, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. I get, got, there was a room around saying I was a paedophile, so I basically had blokes trying to get at me and I to get them moved into the wing where they keep <laughs> rapists and murders anyway. So I had 30, 20 odd days in there. Mm. So well, well, what strikes me about your case in particular is that a lot of the um, false allegation cases, of which there are a lot more actually than... There's quite a few. Yeah, now, I think yeah. there's about two a month now. Yeah. Um, but a lot of those are predominantly sort of chance meetings in nightclubs, etc., and then, you know, after that. But with you, you were in a relationship yeah, with we this was, woman. We, How we, long had you been together? We have been with... I was with her from 2009. And then, obviously, she decided to, she wanted to become a barrister. She'd done the law, the law of the bit. She wanted to be a barrister. So she moved back home to the barrister. And then... But she also liked to have a... Bit too much of the pop. But where did where did I mean? Obviously, you were completely exonerated. I can't get my head around where does that come from? And she's in a relationship with you, and she knows your, you and your family. And where? What was that I, all about? We we <laughs> I think for the last three years, every day that question is asked. Mm. She was using it, wasn't she? Using it an ex well, the pretense of the trauma as an excuse as to why she wasn't doing well in her yeah, exams. She'd, she'd done four. Out of the 12 exams and the other eight, she was then. But obviously, she, she confided in a friend at the, where she was doing it and a colleague, and obviously didn't expect them then to push it as far as to it the went police. to oh. the police. And then, obviously, the first two officers that arrested me, if they had done their job right in the first place, I wouldn't be sitting there now. So they, they did a the job, though, the, the, the second the time. The second time, did, like, yes. the, well, after it got thrown out <coughs> on the 13th of January 2012. Mm -hmm. The CPS woman asked us to help invest, arrest her for perversing the course of justice. What I, what I think about all these cases that crop up is a stigma that's attached. Yeah, you do. I mean, you have a high profile case, for example, like Jimmy Tarbuck's case that was yeah, dropped. Dropped. But then he has to still live with the stigma. Well, you, 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 got, you got it. But I've got a good circle of friends that are. You know about women. I have women friends that I go to the pub with, mm. and my wife's at home. But I, I have women friends at the pub, and we're a good circle of friends that are around me, and they all know what I'm like. Mm. They know I'm, I'm the one that throws them mm. in the taxi to get them home and make sure they get home and all the rest of it. But I mean, we should clarify here because you, you mentioned your wife, so anybody listening yeah. from home, so you'd split up from we your split wife, up, haven't yeah. you? And then, and, then... and then from the day I was arrested, things stopped. She comes, she was back at the door and says, "Right, we're going to get because we we mm. have worked, well, I've been and so my, it's brought you back together yeah, we've, again. We're this close case. together. We've we're always been close. She's she's my best friend and my soulmate. Yeah. But we've always, although we split up, she's still my best and friend. And where did 